How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I bring to you a brand new pickups video. I know it's been a while since I've done one, but I say that with every video <laughs> to be honest. Anyways, today I bring to you some new pickups during my Thanksgiving break. Um, I have three vinyls and one CD to show you, so without a further ado, let's get into it. So starting off, I'll start off with the CD, which is Megadeth's So Far, So Good, So What. This is an original CD from 1988 on Combat-Capital. And uh, just going to show you quickly what's in here and then give my quick opinion on the album. Um, so far, so good, so what? I think a lot of people will agree with me when I say this as this is my least favorite of the classic Megadeth era. You know, from Killing Is My Business through through Countdown. <clears throat> it's not a bad album, but it's not that great either. It's still, it's still good. Uh, starts off great though with Into the Lungs of Hell. Um, Set the World of Fire is okay. I know it's uh, the first song that Dave wrote for Megadeth. He wrote on the infamous Bud, uh, infant, Jesus Christ, infamous bus ride um, after you got kicked out of Metallica. And it's an all right song, to be honest. Um, I love their cover of Anarchy in the UK. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, Mary Jane is a cool, deep track that I think she could talk about more. Um, very creepy, very eerie about a witch. Um, 502, kind of a filler track. It's okay, but nothing too special. Um, In My Darkest Hour, easily the best track. Um, the most popular from this album, and for good reason. It's iconic, epic, and just emotional. Love that song. Um, Liar, uh, probably the most underrated track on here. I love Liar. Dave is just, just going off uh, ranting about former guitarist Chris Poland. And... Uh, a great track and then it ends with hook and mouth which is kind of an odd song for megadeth structure wise but it's an okay tune to end the album i, uh, I love the lyrics so very anti anti pmrc um but overall it's a good album my least favorite from the classic era but i'll still take it over uh their other uh, later albums like risk or world needs a hero next up uh starting off with the vinyls we got Rat out of the cellar. This is an original copy from 1984, and uh, instead of me repeating it over and over again, I'll just say it now. The albums that I will be showing you for the rest of the video are all from are all from uh, 1984, and their original copies as well. So yeah, original Atlantic Records. Um, sleeve is nothing too special. It's just the Atlantic thing, and the vinyl itself is on my turntable. I was playing this today and sounds great. Uh, Out of the Cellar is my second favorite Rat album, just behind uh, Invasion. Um, my favorite track on here is probably the Morning After underrated tune, but obviously you got the big hits, which still pack a good punch. Like I, I don't get tired of Round and Round. Um, I think it's still a great catchy song. Wadden Man is badass. Back from War is great. I'm insane is fun. Lack of communication is heavy. It's a it's overall a good album. Uh, maybe maybe you could call "She Wants Money" to be a little bit filler. I think that's like the only filler song on here. But everything else on here is great. Um, so yeah, and one of the best uh, hair metal albums for sure. So, uh, Rat Out of the Cellar, classic. Next up, we got a single here. From Striper. Yeah, I know a lot of you out there don't like Striper, but I love them. Um, this is their first ever single that they release. Reason for the season, so it's a Christmas single. Um, cool thing about my copy is whoever had this uh, kept a good job at keeping the original uh, shrink wrap on it. As you can see, the hype sticker is still here. And if you want to pause and, and read it, there you go. And the way they were able to keep this on here is by taping the the jacket to hell and back. <laughs> Look at that. Now, one thing I don't get about this, about my copy, is whoever had it decided to take the original inner sleeve, cut it in half, and, and tape it inside the jacket. Now, that I don't get, because now it's just a pain getting 
getting the record in and out, so I have to leave it in, in the plastic sleeve. But that's just, that's the least of my worries. I think this is a great addition to my Striper collection, and my opinion on the song "Reason for the Season." It's a, I like it. Uh, it's not one of my favorite Striper songs, but I gotta say it would have fit well if it was on back on the Yellow and Black Attack. Um, it's very catchy, very melodic. I do think that Michael might have reused the melody in the verse for uh, for calling on you because to me. The beginning of the verses on here, the melody at the beginning of each verse, kind of sounds like the beginning of the melody in the chorus of Calling On You. I don't know if you guys hear that, but I hear it. But anyways, uh, Roots for a Season is a great song. And I like the B-side where they do a cover of Winter Wonderland. And Michael's like, Michael's trying to, you know, urge them all to join him. And he's like, come on, Robert, come on, Oz, you're my brother, this and that. And they eventually do it, and they... Put out a decent rocking, a decent rocker version of it. But yeah, uh, not too much to say here. Just another great addition to my Striper collection. Striper, reason for the season. Wow, this is this is going to be a fast pickups video. Um, because we're already on to the last album. Anyways, this one I'll be calling out to all the old school underground metalheads. I got you... A very underrated new wave of British heavy metal band with their iconic live album, Live at the Inferno. That's right, I'm talking about Raven. This is a great live album. And if you guys know Raven, you know how great this is. I've been getting to them a lot lately. And they're, they're, they're like Judas Priest meets... Early Metallica meets ACDC, you know, like they have a good mixture of traditional metal, speed metal, and and a little bit of hard rock, straightforward hard rock. As you can see, original Megaforce right there, John Zazula, all that good shit. Uh, great live pictures in here. And Kick-Ass Gatefold with Mark, John, and Wacko. Um, cool shot there. Even put it up here, there's no overdubs on this album. And I can tell because this album is very raw. You, you can tell none of this is touched up, which I can appreciate. I'm not one of these people that, that like complains about touched up albums. Like to me, if it sounds good, it sounds good. And it, like, for example, Kiss Alive 2, like that's touched up. Or Wasp Live in the Raw, that's those live albums have been touched up. Doesn't bother me. I still enjoy them, and I still enjoy raw live albums like this. Um, I love reading the liner notes on this because uh, they thank Metallica and and uh, Anthrax right here because they toured together that year. All for One slash Kill 'Em All tour, Kick Ass, and and uh, Fistful of Metal. And then at the bottom they say to anyone who has attempted to hold us back in the last four years, fuck you. I love that. I just love uh, underground 80s metal bands just not giving a fuck, just just saying whatever they want in the liner notes. It's amazing. And then lastly, I like I like it over here. I think it's funny how uh, they say they use ESP guitars, but no one would dare endorse Wacko. <laughs> Anyways, um, you got that classic Megaforce label with Raven Live on it. Uh, I'm not going to take out both records because it's a pain to put them back in but take my word for it they're both original anyways my opinion on this live album it's great man um great live versions of take control mind over metal um crash bang wall up is fun all for one anthemic uh run silent run deep slash tyrant of the airwaves uh crazy world firepower is probably my favorite on here Break the Chain is awesome. There's so much good stuff. Um, great guitar solo from Mark Gallagher on on uh, Forbidden Planet. And holy shit, John Gallagher it blew my mind when I heard this bass solo. Um, I-G-A-R-B-O. Like, how, the, how in the world is this guy not talked about more? Like, he... I'm telling you, he he is like in competition with Cliff Burton. Like his bass sounds so much like a guitar, and not only he could shred like Cliff, but he can 
he can also finger tap and arguably even better than Cliff. Like he sounds like Eddie Van Halen. This dude is crazy, and and his vocals are insane as well. Hitting all these high notes while playing is just it's a freak of nature, and it's amazing, you know. But yeah, great energetic live show. Um, if I had to complain about anything on here, I would complain that. For some reason, some of the songs fade in and out in the middle of the album. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the middle of the album. Uh, usually on live albums, the song, the audio usually fades in and out at the end of each side. But for some reason, like like some tracks fade in and out even though they're in the middle of the album. The, not really a big complaint. It's just I was just a little bit confused by that. But anyways, it's a great live record. And if you own no Raven and you want to get into them, start with this because it shows off the greatness of this band live and the best song, the some of the best songs that they had from their first three albums. So yeah, that wraps it up for my Thanksgiving pickups video. Uh, I want to try to extend this a little bit, so I'll just talk for a, for a couple of minutes. Um, these records and CD that I got, uh, I got from my favorite record store, which I like to give a shout out to. Um, shout out to Welfare Records in Haverhill, Massachusetts. If you guys are ever in the Massachusetts area and near the city Haverhill, check out Welfare Records because they do not disappoint. Every time I go there, I'm always walking out of there with about four to six albums, you know, and they have very good prices as well. Like when you walk in, the majority of the store is between like a dollar to $25 and then there's a little back room that has album rare more rare albums that cost $30 and up like I went I went back there and I saw like you know original Dio Holy Diver Queen's Right the Warning um some cool rare stuff there original Black Sabbath uh, Master Reality but um but just in general, they have a great selection, tons of CDs, uh, and they range all they range like from rock to metal to hardcore punk to gothic to industrial and stuff. They have a jazz section if you're into that. Um, they even have for vinyl. Obviously, they have metal and hardcore punk, but they also have a new wave section if you're into that, and they also have a rap section in the back if you're into that. Um, the staff is very nice and very helpful. Um, they can they usually look for the album for you if you ask for something specific. And uh, like I said, if you're ever near the Haverhill, Massachusetts, and you're looking for some records, check out Welfare Records. You know, you I don't think they'll disappoint you at all. So quick shout out to them. Thank you for thank you for all the amazing times. That I've been there like I've gotten so many albums cassettes and CDs from there and I've walked out of there a happy camper every time so thank you welfare records so anyways thank you guys for watching uh thank you so much for 800 subs we're almost there to a thousand I probably I probably could reach a, a a thousand if I uploaded more but what can you do life gets busy and stuff I have school and work so it's all right um I am hoping to maybe make more videos in the future, like Christmas is coming up soon. I, I'll definitely be making a Christmas pickups video, so keep on keep a lookout for that. And if I can, I'll try to make some TikTok videos uh, for, and post them on here. So um, keep a lookout for those. But anyways, thank you guys for the support, and I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Peace out.